busting heads. Spring Thunder is brought to you by Realtree, Woodhaven Custom Calls, Huntera, Federal Premium Ammunition, Bog Pod, the National Wild Turkey Federation, and Cabela's. It was windy last night. There wasn't a peep out of the birds. And uh, we just had three or four down here. They fly, they're already down, so um, we're in the best spot that we can find on the farm. What a nice morning. Could not be uh, more satisfied than uh, taking a few days off work, heading to Iowa, and shooting a turkey. I'm really excited about tomorrow. Tomorrow's opening day here in Illinois, and I got drawn for a special hunt area. worked out today. I heard this turkey about a half a mile away. Um, this is a walk-in or you can use a bicycle so I biked in. Um, I'm only probably a mile from the car total so uh, things worked out perfect. Well, it's April 17th and it's the first morning of the Michigan uh, turkey season. I got in here last night and uh, saw three different uh, long beards. So I snuck out after dark. We came back in this morning and he got right out in front of me in the federal third degree. Uh, put him down with no problem at all. Welcome back to this week's episode of Spring Thunder. We've been down in Missouri hunting public land for the past five or six days now and had some success but uh, it's also been a very tough hunt. There's a lot of hunting pressure on this location that we're at and it's uh, my, our second year hunting it. So it was an adventure to say the least but we did get into some birds, had uh, some luck at the beginning of the trip and then some bad weather hit towards the end of our trip and it made the hunting very tough. Right now it's rainy and it's kind of cool here in the Midwest. It doesn't have the birds shut down completely but um, they're definitely hitting fields and open areas almost immediately after they get down off of the roost. And it's, it's made for a challenging hunt down here in Missouri, needless to say. But on this week's episode, Greg Clements had an awesome hunt in Iowa last week with Jim Reiser, and we'll also bring you several others along the way. Birds are close. We're back on Missouri public land, and it's uh, April 24th. That's a hunt right there, buddy. Buddy. 
How about that for a public land Missouri hunt? Oh my gosh. I hope y'all enjoyed that show. Because I guarantee me and Zach did. <laughs> they gonna long be. Big old long beard, great big paintbrush on him. The one tip I'll give you, um, every time I kill a turkey or I have one come in that busts me, um, th this bird right before I shot him, he raised that head up and he definitely saw me at the tree. So what I'll do is I'll come out here to the spot where he saw me and I will look back at my setup. As you can see, that big white up back down in there is where I was sitting about 25 yards away. And he saw me at this spot. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go down there, I'm gonna sit up against that tree the way that I was, and I'm gonna have Zach film me from the bird's perspective and see if there was any flaws in my setup. You know, most of the time when they're coming in looking like that, they're gonna pick you off at some point. But if you're hid, perfect you know if you've got that tree to break up your outline if you've got the proper back cover if you've got the proper foreground cover in between you and the turkey it can help you get that bird in closer for a shot so I'm gonna go back here and sit at that tree and you'll be able to see just exactly what the turkey saw before he got shot Well, it's the afternoon of the 23rd, and we got our butts kicked this morning on public land. But this afternoon, Jim and I have come back out to the farm where he shot his bird on Friday. And the plan for this afternoon is to work our way down into a big bottom field, listen for a little while, and if we don't hear anything, we're gonna hop in a ditch and work our way through the entire length of that ditch uh, throughout this property, maybe a mile or more. The conditions are ideal today. It's gorgeous out. Hopefully we can end up filling my tag. We haven't even made it down to the big bottom field, and we heard a gobbler twice now. So I don't even know if that we'll be able to make it into the ditch system. We're probably just going to get down to this bottom field. Hopefully we find a lone gobbler here that will uh, be willing to respond to the call. Do you see him? He's in the corner where we were the other day. Oh man, my heart is pounding. That never gets old. That was beautiful. My word. Well, 
it's funny how quickly things can turn around in the turkey woods. This morning, we got our butts whooped on public land. There was a bunch of gobblers in the area, but we just could not get them to come to the calls, get them to commit, at least. We saw one, um, probably an old long spur, that was in a strut zone that just would not come down to us. So that encounter didn't work out, but this one sure did. And as you can see, this is just perfect, lush, green field. Grass is, you know, six to eight inches tall. You know, obviously they're out here picking in it. This tom would uh, pop out a strut every now and then and pick some grass. So this is a location where the turkeys want to be. Great spot for a tom to pop out, strut, and look for hens that are passing through the area. And I think the, the key to this hunt was being slow and methodical and not just rushing into an area, but making sure there wasn't birds that we were going to bump into. And uh, it all worked out. That federal third degree absolutely hammered his head. Just a big, beautiful Eastern here in Iowa. A few days ago, a young man named Wyatt Showalter from out in Virginia contacted us. He had actually been in a hunting accident with a few of his friends last week. Many of you may have already seen the video. He was able to capture this all on his GoPro camera during the hunt, and it's been circulating around on social media for a few days now. But I had Wyatt and his buddies that were out hunting with him film some interviews, sort of recapping the hunt, what happened, and talk a little bit about hunter safety. It's not something that we touch on enough, I don't think. Turkey hunting can be a very dangerous sport, and uh, a lot of us take it for granted at times. These boys were out there hunting, being 100% safe. They just had decoys set out in front of their little brush pile set up here, and uh, had another hunter sneak in on them. Luckily, nobody was hurt, but uh, there's many lessons to be learned there. The decoys that we use anymore are so realistic that at 40 and 50 yards, you can't really tell if it's a real turkey or not unless it's moving so you've got to be safety conscious at all times you got to know 100 percent that you're shooting at a real live turkey always be thinking safe when you're out there these guys were in this instance and uh, still were in a very dangerous position but i'm going to send it over to wyatt and his friends as they recap this whole experience okay this is just kind of a follow-up of what happened april 15th uh, just jump right into um, Gabe actually roosted the birds Friday night that we were hunting Saturday morning. I'll just kind of let him tell. Yeah, how I, went. I, I just went up there and there's a good hill that I can see a bunch of the farm from. And I seen the two long beards and I seen, I thought they only had three hens with them. The other hens must have been in the woods earlier. Anyway, got up there Saturday morning, there were hens everywhere. Yeah, hens were everywhere. The birds gobbled really good off the roost. Uh, we had set up, as you can see in the video, by a uh, log and built a little ground blind out in front of us. Um, birds were to in front of us and to the left. We had set our decoys up in front of us to the right, about 25 yards. Um, that way the birds would have to come past us. And uh, they flew down, kind of away from us, walked out into the field. Uh, couldn't quite see them. We could hear them gobbling right over the river. They were a rise from us. Yes. Um, called to them. There was hens calling everywhere that morning. Um, so we were real aggressive with them. We thought we heard somebody come in from behind. <laughs> thought we actually, thought it was actually a turkey at first, and then I thought I had heard him call, and it sounded like a, a slate call. And you can actually see me talking to Gabe in the video saying mm -hmm. I think that was a hunter. Um, ended up being a hunter. They shot shortly afterwards. Um, it was a 243. I know uh, in the first video I put on YouTube, a lot of y'all probably saw that, uh, we had thought it was a shotgun and the reason being when it hit my vest um, it just kind of exploded. The bullet mm -hmm. did. Hit some calls and everything and what I guess I actually got hit by was shrapnel. Um, parts of the bullet, maybe stuff like that. I had a bruise on my hip. Thankfully nothing went in. Um, bruise on my hip about that big. Just uh, busted the skin open a little bit and was bleeding. When first shot, I thought I'd been shot with a rifle. Um, kind of ruled off the log. Wasn't sure what was going on. Um, so we just kind of started yelling and uh, I just kind of let... Yeah, I mean, my initial reaction and I know some of the comments on YouTube and stuff was, well, I mean, why didn't the cameraman 
do anything. You just kind of sat there. That's because I didn't know what happened. <laughs> it wasn't that I didn't care. But, um, I just didn't know what happened. At first, I thought maybe Hans's gun went off. Um, and then, obviously, I picked up pretty soon that that's not what happened, that somebody had actually shot. Um, I don't know if I didn't hear Hans say right away that he had got shot or if I just didn't register. But, um, yeah, I, I was confused. I just sat there. Um, obviously, you can see on the GoPro video. Um, but then once... We realized what happened. I think me and Gabe both went over and I'm trying to make sure that Hans wasn't dying on the street. Yeah, I didn't know. I mean, you know, when it, when they first shot, I didn't know what they were shooting at. I didn't know if a second shot was coming. I had no idea. Yeah, that's kind of why I stayed behind the log a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the people come running out of the woods then as well. They were very apologetic, um, have no hard feelings towards them, anything like that. Uh, yeah. They were just out hunting turkeys, made kind of a bad decision, but. Um, it's a lesson for all of us. Uh, number one, decoy placement. Make sure you set your decoys where you can either see other people approaching or um, in our case, uh, the bullet hit a T-post and ricocheted over to us. We had set the decoys to the right of us. Kind of with that in mind, as well as the God was working across in front of us, I am kind of conscious of that when I put my decoys out, especially mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. um, but. Yeah, and also make y sure make sure you get a tree, you know, as right. as wide as your shoulders. Which is something we didn't do a great right. job. We had a log there, but right. I mean, we were still exposed to get mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. Make sure, on the other hand, make sure you know exactly what you're shooting at, uh, without a doubt in your mind. Um, one inch over, half inch over, that could have been a totally different story. No doubt. Um, mm -hmm. And also in this instance, I mean, not only what you're shooting at, but what's in front of it and right. behind it in this instance, right. because we were between. When I, it was in front of us, in, the, in front of her target in this instance, because we were between her and the decoys. Well, that's going to do it for this week's episode. We're going to be hunting Iowa and Missouri public land back and forth this week a little bit before we head out to Wyoming on Thursday for the Old West Invitational Turkey Shoot. I wasn't able to go last year. Dell and the boys went out. But um, I can't wait to get back out there. Zach and I are going to head out, chase the Miriams for a few days. It's going to be a lot of fun. So you don't want to miss next week's episode. And if you're not already a member of the NWTF, please click on the link in the corner of our screen. Go over to their page and become one. But thanks for joining us. We'll see you next Monday for the next episode of Spring Thunder.